Welcome back to the lab, folks. So we got in a packet from PHL, and what that usually means is we got our boards in from PCB Way. PCB Way are the sponsors of this video, and that's exactly what we have here. So these are the boards for our little analog keyboard that we designed a couple of weeks ago. And let's have a look at them. Yeah, we did expect them to be very small. Come here. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. Very nice. These will do just great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get the parts. To build one of these things, we're going to build one up. And then we're going to test it out. So, okay, we're just going to build it here in real time. There aren't terribly many parts and we can talk along the way. Now, one of the things that I picked up the other day was, was the, this little uh, iron cleaner. And it's just a typical one that's supposed to have brass wool in it. And one of my uh, viewers uh, asked the question, um, is the brass wool really brass? Well, what they said is copper colored. But in my experience, uh, what you get with these um, little uh, cheap iron cleaners is that, you know, they're not real brass and, you know, here we go, let's pick it up with a magnet. So what I normally do with these, I just hand them over to, over to the kitchen and we can use them there for scrubbing pots and they seem to do a pretty good job of that. Yeah, that's the only where they go. Now what I do is I get this stuff. We've got a, a handy little uh, hardware store just in town and uh, they had real brass wool. So I, I buy that off them and uh, you know it's a smaller little thing of it. It's pretty cheap. I think uh, it worked. They work out about I don't know, seventy-five cents or dollar each. So I'll just pop a couple of them in there. My idea for this project is to have a, a culminating project at the end of it to, to show the benefits of modular design. Um, I hope that's kind of coming across that there are benefits to modular design. The idea for that project is I want to build, build a timer. So my situation here with my puppy, who's over there, over that way, he's uh, lying down on his bed in the lab. Uh, my situation with him is that he, he has a, a condition called uh, absolute dry eyes. And you hate it when you, anything that uh, sounds as bad as dry eyes is preceded by the word absolute. And what that means is that his uh, his eyes do not produce any of the water component of tears whatsoever. You know, he doesn't have uh, any functioning tear glands. Now, his, his eyes do produce the lipid components and the mucus components. And uh, they produce a great deal of those to make up for the fact that he doesn't have any tears. Normally during the day, like when he's resting over there, I have a special drop that can go into his eyes. And it, it's a good long lasting drop. So if, if I put that in there and he's resting, he's not too active. It lasts about two hours, you know, even a little bit longer sometimes. And then at night we have a special cream we put in. So I have to go to bed late because it, the cream only lasts about six hours. So I have to go to bed fairly late and get up fairly early to make sure his eyes are looked after. And then when we go on walks, we have another one, another drop that goes into his eyes that I, I bring with us because it's less viscous than the, the drop that normally goes in. And uh, that's, you know, for the idea if he were out walking and he gets something in his eye, I can use that to flush his eye out, but it also provides lubrication, like a normal eye wash that humans might use uh, to clean their eyes. It doesn't have any lubricant in it, so that would not be great for him because he needs that lubricating capability too. Because if you wash all the mucus and lipids out of his eyes, which would happen with a wash. It takes it quite a while for him to get them back again, and he's got no tears in, the, in in between time. So that's what that drop is, a lubricating drop that is low enough viscosity to flush his eyes out, flush sand or whatever it is that gets into his eyes, because he, he can't do that himself, and also to keep his eyes moistened. But when we're on a walk, it's too easy to get distracted just by the scenery and everything else. And what he, he really needs his eyes done about every 15 minutes, you know, so he will let me know if his eyes are under distress at all. He'll start, uh, he'll come up to me and rub his eyes against my pants or something like that. But by that time, there's damage happening and you want to avoid that situation. So the idea is that I'll build a little timer using a pickaxe microcontroller, an analog keyboard, 
um, the display module that we we designed before this one and uh, kind of combine all those things and, and put them into onto a circuit board and then the circuit board will mount in here with a, a, a battery and I'll come up with some sort of charging circuit for the battery. And that will be my timer. I mean, these are small enough to fit in a shirt pocket and, and that way I can have the, the beeper up near the top of it. I can hear it quite loudly and I'll know it's time to put drops in his eyes. And after a while, he's, he's a fairly smart dog. He'll understand that when the beep happens, he needs to come. That's what I want to build. That's going to be my culminating project for the series on modular design. And now you know more about my little puppy than you ever wanted to know. All right, it's built. Now um, we just got to test it out. You know, I wrote a, I wrote a little program to test it. So I'm going to show you that in a minute. Just let me see if I can get this settled down in there a little bit better. Oh, another thing I wanted to show you, like uh, a lot of people use the like the, the ones I used to put in here, these little tactile switches. Uh, a lot of people use these ones on breadboards. Now you can, but they the, the legs on them are very, very short. And I, the ones I use on breadboards, a little bit of breadboarding that I do, are, are these ones here. I don't know if you can see them. You see, they've got the, there are only two wires on them and they're really nice and long. These are so much better in breadboards. Uh, yeah, for, for breadboarding, this is the way to go rather than the four pin ones. Okay, let me get uh, stuff arranged here and we'll come back and, and test this keyboard. Okay, so here we've got everything is all set up. Um, you know, let, me, uh, let me bring that uh, program up on the screen and I'll just explain to you what we're doing here. So it's pretty easy. So there, there's this uh, series of uh, if statements here if, else, if, and so forth. And all these do is, is determine the status of the keyboard. So we actually do, we do a, a analog read of the pin that the keyboard's on. And if it's between 60 and 68, then we set the uh, status to one. If between 124 and 132, we set it to two. And between 188 and 196, we set it to three. And if it's greater than 253, we set it to four. And of course it's zero if there's can't read anything at all. And then all we do is, is uh, oh my puppy's dreaming over there. All right, and uh, so what we do here is we determine if there's been a change. So as long as the status is not zero and there's been a change in the status, then we go sub this little no so notification subroutine here called note. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn this LED on. I'm going to emit a sound for 250 milliseconds and then I'm going to turn this LED off and we're going to pause for 250 milliseconds and we're going to do this the number of times depicted by the status. Status is four, like if I press button four then it's going to go beep 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 and flash four times and three and two and one and so forth. At least I hope that's what's going to happen. If not we, could, we can just change these values here so that we can pick up uh, on the status of the keyboard. So let's, uh, let's program. All right, that's complete. Okay, so now let's see what happens if I press a button. Now I guess this would be button number one here. Closest one is button number one? Yes, it is. So far, so good. Hey, look at that. Now, as I was thinking about this, um, this, you know, you could, you've got 256 values there. You could, uh, if you have a range here, that if you make your resistors accurate enough, you can get your range down to about four between each button press. Uh, you could get up to 64 keys on a keyboard. You could build quite a, a decent keyboard and you only have one pin on your MCU to read that keyboard. Another thing I noticed in the design of it as I was going through it is that it's got, uh, it's got built in rollover. So if I press this one and I press that one while the other one's pressed, it'll roll over. Um, roll back doesn't work. It does roll back, but it only rolls back when you release. So if I, if I have this one pressed and I press this one, 
as soon as that one is released, it rolls back. So you've got roll forward and roll back, and it's N key. So if you have three of them pressed, it'll, it'll take the highest. And rolls back as you go back so it's it, yeah it's it's a uh, it's really decent and you could of course because it's, so, it's under software control you can make it behave whatever way you want all right that's it 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 works another successful project um, thanks again to the guys at uh, PCB way for helping out with this I really appreciate it it uh, it makes it all possible so we're going to the next time we come back to the modular thing we're going to um, we're going to design using basically these pieces here, maybe a couple other things. We're going to design our board to fit into this box here. And I did want to originally use a, a 08 M2 pickaxe for the compact size, and I really only need six pins, but the unfortunate thing with the 08 M2, it only has four output pins, which I need, but one of those pins is also the analog to digital conversion pin and the two other pins are input only so no input here required except for the analog to digital converter and uh, that unfortunately is on one of the output pins so I was unable to get enough pins so I'm going to use the, the next best one which would be the 14 M2 so that's the one I'm going to use in our design thanks a lot for coming out guys thanks PCB way for helping with this and I hope to see you back for the next one I do on this where I designed the circuit for this and we'll send that off get a PC board and build it too. Before we go folks, I'd just like to add that this year is PCB Way's 10th anniversary and they're putting on a bit of a celebration. Head on over to their website and you can see right at the banner on the top there, start PCB Way's 10th anniversary tour. Go check it out. This is going on all month. Bye bye folks.